Hi, and welcome to another episode of All Things Considered. Tonight, I'm going to be speaking to you about Seattle tourism and how it could possibly address the homeless crisis. It says here, combined, <coughs> Seattle and King County get tens of millions of visitors moving through the region yearly. With that, many people moving through the area, it's bound to bring up a conversation surrounding a very visible homeless crisis, something the Seattle tourism industry has worked hard to address. It's like, I think it is still our number one concern because at the heart of tourism, we are one of the most walkable cities in America, which is true. And we sell that and we promote that. said Tom Norvak, or Nor, Tom Norwalk, N-O-N-O-R-W-A-L-K, Norwalk. When out-of-towners roll into Seattle, there's a modicum of concern over safety, sanitation, and most importantly, showing the rest of the world that the city is doing what it can to solve the crisis. Not just make the homeless more comfortably homeless, but fix the crisis, not patch over it, fix it. If tourists come to King County in Seattle and view the region as a dispassionate and dangerous, as dispassionate and dangerous, the ripple effect can be significant. And I've been saying that forever. I mean, I've told the mayor that, I've talked to the city council until I'm blue in the face. I've told them that if you have tons and tons and tons of people that are homeless and they're walking around the streets creating a headache and I'm not saying that because I, I don't like the homeless I'm sure there's homeless that are nice people but there's also a lot of homeless that just don't seem to care they really don't and it would be nice if they did So, I'm also wondering exactly how they plan on fixing the homeless uh, issues. But it says here, if your streets experience is your if your street experience is you feel unsafe, if you feel threatened, if you're uncomfortable, it does have an impact on your willingness to either come back or what you do while you're in the city. And that's true. If you don't feel like you can be out and wander around and enjoy the city, when I lived in Seattle back in the 90s, tourists could, could go out and enjoy. Yeah, you had a few panhandlers once in a while floating around. And yeah, there were a, a few homeless people floating around. But it was not like it is today. Not even by a long stretch. It wasn't like it is today. So, in terms of activity, working to address homelessness, Norwalk sees the issues of multi sees the issues as multifaceted. While more support from our police department is at the top of his list of fixes. There are also solutions to be found in within local businesses. We've got critical needs in housing of all types. We've got critical needs and of social services of all types. Okay, that sounds like uh, they've repeated themselves, but they really haven't. And not all of that is borne by the city, he describes. But we got a lot of resources. I think it's how we use them how we prioritize and then what role businesses play. And I think we're finding that businesses are stepping up more and more to help resolve some of these issues. What I see personally is that the homeless is like that family member that you never want to invite to the party. You kind of want to forget about them because they're kind of embarrassing. The homeless in Seattle, are, are they're, they're kind of like the people and poor people, not just homeless, but poor people, I'm talking people making 20 grand or less a year. 
those people are kind of considered an eyesore. So Seattle would rather not deal with those people. Seattle would rather, and when I say Seattle, I mean the city council. And it's been going on for years. It's not just a recent thing. But Seattle wants to be, wants to be rich and cool. Seattle wants to be one of the cool kids that was at school. Not one of the nerds that sat off in the corner eating their lunch. They want to be with the jocks and they want to be with uh, the cheerleaders. Seattle wants to be nothing but cool kids at the cool table. It's tired of being the geek. It's tired of being the uh, working town. It wants to be uh, Silicon Valley. It wants to be San Francisco. It wants to be New York. But even in those cities, even in those areas, they've got homeless and they've got poor. Now, I don't think it's fair that you guys should just sweep the poor and the homeless under the rug and act like they don't exist. Nobody ever, when they're running for either mayor or governor or they're running for uh, president, talk about the poor. We talk about the middle class and we talk about how things are hurting the middle class and I understand that's fine to talk about them, but I also understand that we got to deal with the poor. The poor should have a life as well. The poor should not be treated like like ilk. The poor should not be treated like like they don't matter. It's unless you've there's been a time, I'll tell you, there's been a time when I went out shopping and I spent a thousand dollars on clothes, shoes, and dinner. In that order. And now, I live on $771 a month. That's to cover my rent, my utilities, my phone payment, my internet payment. It includes uh, the payment on my tablet that I'm paying for. It includes my storage locker and also my food and my transportation costs. I have to live on that amount every month because I'm on disability now. If I could get my artwork off the ground and if I could start selling my artwork and my, uh, my portraits and digital paintings that I do of uh, different landscapes, cityscapes and things, but yeah, if I could sell those, that, that would be great. I wouldn't have to be on disability. I could be one of the cool kids at the cool table. But instead, I'm a, I'm a nerd and a geek and, and a nobody at a table in the very back of the lunch cafeteria at school. I'm the last one to get picked when it comes to dodgeball. I'm the one that nobody wants to date because of the way I look and the way I act. That's how I feel. But I make it work. I make it work. And if I can make it work on $771 a month, I can turn Seattle around. And in 2025, when Seattle, the uh, next election comes around, which will be in 2021, when 2025 comes around for the mayoral election, I plan on running for mayor of Seattle. And I plan on making it work. It says here, uh, back to uh, uh, what we're talking about, uh, the um, homeless in Seattle and how the tourist industry is trying to take care of it. It says here, we've got critical needs of how and housing of all types. We've got critical needs and of social services of all types. And not all of that is borne by the city. But we've got a lot of resources. I think it's how we use them, how we prioritize them and what role business plays and I think we're finding that business is stepping up more and more to help resolve some of these issues. No, the businesses aren't. So how many tourists exactly are coming into Seattle and King County every year? The gee whiz numbers as Dave Ross calls them are staggering with Norwalk citing roughly 21 million overnight visitors a year and 41 million day visitors. 
which means that you got people from other cities coming into Seattle for the day and leaving. And overnight visitors, you got people either coming in from other cities or from out of the state going into Seattle. Now, Norwalk says that they think they're moving in the right direction. Well, I will call Norwalk and I will see what he means by all of this. Will threat to Seattle tourism spark fiercer homeless response? That is my next video that I am planning to do. Will the threat to Seattle tourism spark fiercer homeless response? Anyway, if you like my videos, like and subscribe. Leave a comment down at the bottom to let me know what you think. If you're tired of me talking about Seattle and you got a better subject for me to talk about, or you've got something that you've been curious about that maybe you, you don't know too much on and I can help out, or if you've got something you want to share for a video idea, leave it in the comments. I'd love to hear about it. This is a you and I experience. It's not just me, although I am doing all the talking. It is an us experience. It is a we, the people. Anyway, this has been All Things Considered. Have a good night, Seattle, and all points beyond.